that shit off that long ago. Okay, so each quadrant has their own reference angle. More seconds. All right. Okay, so for your reference angles. not going to draw the unit circle. We're just going to kind of fill in each quadrant. So you have quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. And for our reference angle, we'll make that equal theta, but we'll put a little line over it. Some books may have theta with a little r next to it. It, it kind of varies. So I'll just make that our reference angle. Okay, now in quadrant one, uh -oh. our reference angle, thinking I hit too far. Our reference angle just equals our regular angle. We don't have to change anything, it's right in quadrant one. Now in quadrant two, if you remember, everything we kind of matched up, if we had 30 degrees here, we went 30 degrees, but that way. And remember, this is our pi over two, pi, three pi over two, or well, you want to say zero or two pi. But if we were going in degrees, you have 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and a complete circle, 360 degrees, or 2 pi. So really, if you count by nines, 9, 18, 27, 36, you just basically did the degrees. Bless you. If you did the 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, you just did the radian. So that's kind of the quick way to count it. Okay. Now remember here, how we matched up the pi over 30 and the pi over 30 here, was we went to the x-axis and we swung it that way. So our reference number here, I mean a reference angle here, is going to be pi, uh-oh, pi minus theta. Now that's if you're using radians. Actually, let me clear that up. If you're using degrees, your reference angle would be 180 degrees minus theta. Same formula, but if you're using radians, you're gonna use the pi minus theta. If you're using the degrees, it's gonna be 180. Now, quadrant three, if you remember, we swung it this way. So if you had pi over 30 here, it's going to match your pi over 30 here. Okay, so our reference angle is going to equal theta minus pi. Okay, because remember, you're going theta. So if you're going theta, and remember, pi is a straight line. So if you're going theta here, minus pi, you're going to subtract a straight line, which puts you right at here. Okay. And remember, this is for radians. And for degrees, it's just theta minus 180.
Now with this third quadrant, it's a little bit tricky only because let's say if we go here up to 30 degrees, we can either subtract pi, which takes us this way and we end up right at 30 degrees here, or we can add pi and we end up right at our 30 degrees here. So really this can be either plus or minus. And I'll show you why it could be plus or minus as soon as we get to the examples. Okay, now in quadrant four, remember we start at our x-axis and we swung it down so many degrees. Okay, so if we swung it down 30 degrees, our reference angle will be 2 pi minus theta. Again, that's radians. You have 2 pi, oh, not 2 pi, 360 degrees. I'm about to write a theta there. Minus theta, that's if you have degrees. Okay. So those are all of your reference angles. And we're going to use those to avoid having to memorize all of those positives and negatives over here. He said the main thing you want, you want to make sure that to know your reference angles, just how far does it swing off that x-axis. So here, you know, if you go to pi minus whatever degree it is, then that will give you the reference angle for quadrant two. Here, if you go to your x-axis and swing it down, it could be either plus or minus. Like I said, depending on the question. And then for quadrant four, going by the x-axis, you're at two pi, just going to swing down. All right, any questions so far? All right. Nope, you want still writing. All right. So let's see if we want to find the reference angle. Of two pi over three. And when looking for the reference angle, drawing a little sketch helps. Because you actually have to know what quadrant the original angle is in. Okay. So to find our reference angle, just a quick little x and our y here. Okay. Remember, that denominator tells us how many pieces that upper half of the unit circle is going to be cut into. So 2 pi over 3, uh-oh, top half of the circle is going to be cut into three pieces. So if you kind of cut this into three pieces, and it helps to ignore that because it can kind of get confusing. Okay, so this is one pi over three. I'll make an actual one there, makes it easier to. So one pi over three, two pi over three. That might need to be up a little more, but this is good enough. And three pi over three is equal to pi. Okay. And the only reason I kind of erase that y-axis is because a lot of times when you're trying to cut it into three pieces, it doesn't really look right with that y-axis there. So if you kind of 
erase it and cut it into three or four or six pieces usually helps. Okay, so we know two pi over three is in quadrant two. Okay, so we use the reference angle. equals pi minus theta. Uh oh, sorry about that. Okay. So we know our theta is two pi over three. Okay. So that means our reference angle is equal to pi minus two pi over three. So we can't subtract to get our common denominators. So our theta, well, reference angle is equal to 3 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3, which is just 1 pi over 3. Okay, so that would be our reference angle. Okay, now which formula you use completely depends on which quadrant. That's why that little sketch helps. Because sometimes they'll tell you what quadrant, and sometimes they won't. So if they don't tell you which quadrant, then you have to figure it out on your own. All right. Any questions on that so far? All right. So let's say if we wanted to find the reference angle of 170 degrees. Again, a quick sketch usually helps. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just something to help you visualize. Okay. So we know here our y axis is 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360. Uh -oh. So we know 170 is somewhere between 90 and 180. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just need to know what quadrant. Okay. Now again, since probably should have picked a different number, but I want to get a different quadrant next time. So since 170 degrees uh -oh, is in quadrant two. We're going to use the reference angle reference angle equals instead of pi minus theta 180 degrees minus theta. Okay. Same quadrant, same formula, just instead of pi we're using 180. So which means our reference angle is going to equal 180 degrees minus 170 degrees. So our reference angle is going to equal 10 degrees. All right. Any questions on that one? seconds. All right. Now, if you had one just in the first quadrant, those are probably the easiest. So find the 
reference angle of 55 degrees. Uh oh, clean that up some. All right, so again, just make a quick graph or a quick drawing. You have 90 degrees, 180, 270, and a complete circle is 360 degrees. We know 55 degrees in quadrant one. So in quadrant one, the reference angle is actually equal to the angle. So reference angle equals angle in quadrant one. So that means the reference angle is just 55 degrees. Uh-oh, clean that up a little bit. All right, any questions on that one? Okay. Sheet. Just oh, he wants to write in. I'll leave it up for a little bit. All right. <clears throat> okay. Now let's say instead of just the angle by itself, we plug it into a cosine or a sine. So what if we use the reference angle? to write cosine of 43 pi over 36 in terms of a positive acute angle in radians. So all that's saying is that we're going to rewrite 43 pi over 36 as a theta equals radians, but the radians is between 0 and pi over 2. So it's going to be in that first quadrant. Okay. So again, the first thing you want to do is draw a little graph. But we're not going to cut that top half into 36 pieces. That would just take too long. Okay. So instead of chopping that top half into 36 pieces, we're just going to look at the fact that we know that 36 pi over 36 equals pi. And 3 pi over 2, which we know is down here, if we multiply this by 18 over 18, so 3 pi over 2 times 18 over 18, you actually end up with 54 pi over 36. So you have 36 pi over 36 and 54 pi over 36 which means 43 pi over 36 has to be somewhere in between there. We don't need to know exactly where. We just need to know what quadrant. Since 36 is below 43 is between 36 and 54, we know it's in there somewhere. Did that make sense? Now, since we know 43 pi over 36 is in the third quadrant, we use the reference angle of 
Remember, theta equals, well, the reference angle equals theta minus pi or theta plus pi. Okay, so that means our reference angle is going to be 43 pi over 36 minus pi, or, well, we'll just finish up this one. We'll do the other one separate. Okay, so our reference angle is going to be 43 pi over 36 minus, to match our denominators, make this 36 pi over 36. So our reference angle is going to be 7 pi over 36. Okay. Now if we use this one, our reference angle is going to be 43 pi over 36 plus pi. Uh-oh. Which is going to equal 43 pi over 36 plus 36 pi over 36. Okay, so our reference, uh-oh, why do I keep doing that? Reference angle is going to equal, uh, that would be 79 pi over 36, which really is too big, because remember, acute angle, a positive acute angle. So by it being acute means it has to be between 0 and pi over 2. Because remember, acute means less than 90 degrees. So if it's less than 90 degrees, it can't be bigger than pi over 2. This is bigger than pi over 2. If you cut this into 36 pieces, your pi over 2 would actually equal 18 pi over 36. So 7 pi over 36 would fit in that first quadrant. Does that make sense? Okay, so we know we're not going to use this one. So it's not acute. So that's the answer you're actually going to use. But this isn't your final answer. So we're going to use this reference angle. Okay. Now your third step is now you're just going to find out, since it's in quadrant 3, we know that your cosine of, what was it, cosine? Yep, cosine of 43 pi over 36 would have a negative reference angle. Okay. Yep, clean that up a little bit. Since we know that 43 pi over 36 is in quadrant 3. We know that the cosine of the reference angle will be negative. And that's because x is negative in quadrant 3. So that means our cosine of 43 pi over 36 is going to equal, oh, move that over a little bit, the cosine of our reference angle, which is 7 pi over 36, but it's going to be negative. Any questions on that one? All right. OK. 
Okay, so your first step, just kind of break it down, would be to find which reference angle to use. So we, in order to do that, we just need the right quadrant. Okay. And then your second step is you're going to find out, since you know which quadrant it is, just find out if your reference angle will be positive or negative. And I'll write this over here. See if I can squeeze it there. angle is positive or negative. I'll bring that down a little bit. Here we go. Okay. You just want to find out which reference angle to use. Then once you use your reference angle, just find out if it's positive or negative using the quadrant. Right. Oh, you must still writing. Oh, leave that up for a few more seconds. All right. So let's say, for example, for again, we just want to use the reference angle. to write cosine of 260 degrees in terms of a positive acute angle. Like I said, again, it just means you want to get that reference angle between 0 and 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So your first step, again, find the quadrant and reference angle. Okay, so if we do a quick little sketch. Okay, so we know this is 90 degrees. 180, 270, and a full circle is 360. 260 is between 180 and 270, so we know it's somewhere in here. Okay. So we know it's in quadrant three. So since 260 degrees is in quadrant three, we use the reference angles theta equals oh, reference angle theta minus 180 degrees or theta plus 180. And we can pretty much figure out that the plus 180 won't work, but we'll go through it. There are some instances where that plus will work. And hopefully we'll have time to go through those examples today. Oh, let me see where it comes up. All right, so... If we use theta minus 180, that would be 260 